Ovello is here and it's going to change everything. I can't remember the last time I looked forward to a dive or was as excited for a new piece of kit as much as I am for the dives today. Let's do this. And yes, the cylinder is supposed to face backwards. That's how it's supposed to be. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name is James. As always, so great to have you with us. Now, right off the bat, this video is not sponsored by Avello. Avello have not paid me a penny, so I can say whatever I want in this video, and I will. Now, if you're following us on Instagram, you'll already know that I spent last week in Key Largo learning to dive the Avello system. And if you're not one of the 130,000 people who watched the video we shot with Avello at DEMA last year, you better check that out up here before you watch this video or nothing I say is going to make much sense. We got so many comments and questions on that video that I just didn't have the answers to until last week. I needed to actually dive the unit and test it for myself to feel confident to put my opinions where my mouth is. So that's what I'm going to do today, answer your questions about the Avello system. But because there were so many questions and comments, I've grouped your comments into the following broader topics for discussion rather than go line by line. First up, the naysayers. We'll talk about travel. We'll talk about the failure points and maintenance. We'll talk about the training. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving you my impressions and the questions still to be answered. Let's deal with the naysayers first. About 5% of the comments on that video were just a flat out, this is stupid, why do we need this, scuba works perfectly fine now. That is okay. It's human nature to be afraid of what you don't understand. We need those people in our society, but we also need the other kind of people, the people who create art and buildings and spaceships and move technology on. Make no mistake, one of the things that differs humans from all other animals is our desire to move technology forward. So one of the naysayer comments went something like, all I can say is why my scuba gear is old and it still works fine. Okay, horses were fine and then we invented cars. It used to take weeks to cross the Atlantic, which was fine, and now it takes hours. Being on Earth is fine, but we still went to the moon anyway. So to all the other naysayers, I'd ask you, do you want the technology in your life to just stop developing? Do you want to go back to drawing on cave walls? Traditional scuba is great. I love it too, but it's not perfect. Getting your weighting correct is hard. The gear is heavy. Excellent buoyancy takes years to polish. Avello solves all of these issues. So you can sit in your armchair and be grumpy, or you can get on the train. Either way, I'm here to tell you, with or without you, Avello is a thing that is happening. 
Personally, diving a velo over the last week gave me pause to reflect on the development of scuba technology over the last 60 years. Regulators have improved so much, getting lighter and smaller, more reliable, more powerful. BCDs went from horse collars to jackets to backplate and wings. The advent of the personal dive computer replacing tables. Even the modern materials used to make simple masks and fins have improved. So technology has moved forward in nearly every piece of our dive kit, but we're still using basically the same old heavy clunky cylinders from 60 years ago until now. Travel. A lot of comments went along the lines of, you can't travel with cylinders. Well, first off, yes you can, but that's a different discussion. I'm not going down that rabbit hole today. Most of you probably don't travel, at least not by airplane, with cylinders right now, right? When you hop on a flight to Cozumel, you're not taking two Al-80s with you, are you? A Velo will work the same way. The cylinders will be at your destination. Eventually, through participating dive centers, a Velo are calling hubs. Maybe you will rent the whole thing. They are one size fits all. Or maybe you'll be buying the jetpack and renting the cylinder. That remains to be seen. And maybe one day you'll be able to buy a complete system to have at home, jetpack and hydro tank, and dive it where you live. Firefighters have been using carbon fiber cylinders for decades. Avello's hydro tank are the first DOT approved carbon fiber cylinders for scuba diving and can be legally filled at any dive center right now that has 3,700 PSI capabilities. Like any dive cylinder, the hydro tank gets a visual inspection every year and a hydrostatic test every five years. They are also nitrox ready up to 40% O2 because I do not dive the Spiegel or the Duane on peasant gas. Thank you, please. And yes, you can dive a Velo with a dry suit. You may need some lead to compensate for the dry suit, but not as much as you normally would. So quick ad break. We've had a few people ask if the hat that I've been wearing recently is available for purchase. It is now. Thank you very much. It is up on the Dive Locker store on our website. I will put the link in the description of this video below. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. All right, moving on. Three, failure points and maintenance. A lot of questions were based on training and dive procedures, which is completely understandable. What do I do if? What happens if your pump fails? You swim up, you end the dive, not an emergency. All the pump does is add weight in the form of water. If the pump fails, it means you can't add any more weight, which is a good thing. The pump is working against the gas pressure of the bladder. So even if the pump failed completely, the cylinder can't flood. So you can never be too negatively buoyant, even with a failed pump. What happens if the bladder tears? Well, firstly, the bladder is incredibly strong. It is test rated to 15,000 PSI. They have never had one accidentally rupture, but the Avello test team have intentionally cut, ripped a bladder, reinstalled it back into a cylinder and gone for dives with it. And the bladder actually formed a seal against the inside wall of the cylinder and no water got inside. So this is really a non-issue. What about if the battery is dead? Well, all the battery does is power the pump. So if you can't pump water in at the start of your dive, you can't get underwater. You need to change the battery out for a spare and carry on. If the battery dies mid-dive, you can't pump any more water in, which means you can't add any more weight. Not an emergency. You're neutrally buoyant, end the dive normally, swim up. During training and during the fun dives we did in the days afterwards, I was running the pump for two one-minute cycles per dive. Once at the start to get under, and another around two-thirds of pressure to, remain, to replace the lost gas mass. So one battery lasted me four dives and still had a green LED at the end of the day. What if I run out of air? Well, the same thing as if you ran out of air on a traditional scuba gear. You go to your buddy, you get on their alternate air source, you make a safe, slow ascent, and then you give up scuba diving. Go find something else to do. A ton of people asking how much lift the system has. What are you talking about? There is no lift. There is no air cell. There is no BCD and no lead. I dived all week with zero lead. You don't need lift. Look, I get it. You're comparing this to traditional scuba, which is inevitable because that's what you know. So you're asking questions that you would ask when buying a BCD. Think differently. Let me ask you, how much lift do you have when you go swimming? How much lift do you have when you go freediving? Start there. 
Imagine you're neutrally buoyant at 30 meters and you swim up slowly to five meters. You make no adjustments to your gear whatsoever. You are neutrally buoyant all the way up. If you stop swimming, you're neutrally buoyant at whatever depth you're at. When you get to the safety stop, you're neutrally buoyant. There is no lift. There is no dumping of gas. There is no changes in your buoyant. I've done it. It's incredible. It is truly groundbreaking. Nothing is lifting you up. So at the surface, you open your purge valve, which is manual, it's not electronic. You're just opening a dial and the water you pumped into your cylinder for weight is purged out. Quite spectacularly, I might add. It looks like you're releasing a smoke screen, uh, but that's just the force of the water going into the ambient water. So you are now buoyant or as buoyant as you would be swimming with no gear on. So as long as you can swim, you're good, but you need to swim to be able to dive. So that doesn't change anything. Now, what happens if you surface and you get a cramp or your dive boat is gone, open water style? Well, don't worry. You don't have to tread water while waiting to be rescued. Built into a pocket on the harness is an SMB, which you can inflate on the surface and use for signaling. It has a little clip on it, which is kind of neat. And you can wrap the SMB around your neck, clip it under your chin like a life jacket and stay afloat. Yeah, that, that might still need some work. It's a bit messy, but it's there. Lots of angry questions on redundancy. Lots of angry questions. Redundancy, redundancy. Again, what are you talking about? Do you have redundancy now on single cylinder recreational dives? Or are you comparing a single cylinder recreational setup to technical diving configurations? Because that's not a fair comparison. I would argue there are less failure points on a Velo than there are on a traditional single cylinder scuba system. So what is it exactly you think you need redundancy for? But look, don't take my word for it. I've been diving this system, but still, a Velo has been tested and endorsed by Dan Orr. And if you don't know who Dan Orr is, Google him. What about maintenance? Well, basic owner's maintenance is easy. Post dive, the hydro tank does not need to be rinsed internally. Uh, you need to rinse uh, the pump out by running the jetpack in fresh water for one minute. That's very easy. Uh, as for regular scheduled maintenance, that can be done by your Avello certified technician, and there'll be one at El every Avello hub eventually, uh, just like how you get your regulator service now. And then of course, inevitably, what about for technical diving? CCR, multiple cylinder side mount, can we? No, just no, stop it. Single cylinder recreational diving. Single cylinder recreational diving. For now, ah, no, no, just no. <laughs> okay. Training. At the moment, you can't do your open water course on a velo, but that is coming. I was chatting with Jay, the training director for Avello, who was in Key Largo last week, and he is in the process of writing the Avello open water course. But right now you need to be open water certified and then take the recreational Avello diver, RAD, course like a specialty. You guys know how I feel about the abundance of specialty courses, but specialty training on a velo is absolutely essential because a velo changes all the rules you've previously learned. Buoyancy control at the touch of a button. It's the submarine you can wear. It's like diving with a compressor on your back. All things that were said during this class. This was the first Avello class in Florida, and we were the first people ever to dive the Avello system in the Atlantic Ocean. Just the lineup of students for this class was insane. Some serious heavy hitters here. We had Dan Dawson, owner of Horizon Divers, course director, tech instructor trainer on multiple rebreathers to Mod 3, call sign, legend. Next up, Gabe Espino, Paddy Silver, course director, instructor trainer for Dive Heart, adaptive scuba training, the self-proclaimed best boat captain in the Florida Keys, call sign, juice box. And rounding out the group, yours truly, God's perfect idiot, but with opinions, call sign Redcoat. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Aviad Kahana, chemical engineer, owner, founder, CEO of Velo Dive System, CEO XF Technologies, inventor, scientist, call sign deity. Uh, he, he chose it. I didn't, I didn't choose it. That's what he wanted his call sign to be. Okay. After completing our e-learning ahead of the class, we did a half day session in the classroom, knowledge reviews, and an afternoon of diving in open water. Certified. Yes, there are obviously skills. 
I think if you took an open water student who just finished their open water class and put them straight into a velo, they're going to be like, whoa, this is so much easier. Why didn't you put me in this gear from the start? They're going to feel cheated almost. Yes, I know the cylinder is backwards from traditional scuba. And yes, I wasn't happy going through the wreck with my first stage jutting out like that. But apparently that's how it's supposed to be for a velo. So take your medicine. Yes, I know I'm using a POS Scuba Pro G2 computer, but that is the unit that the Avello have chose to run their algorithm. Yes, there were hose routing opportunities for all of us. We all look like a bag of smashed crabs. I get it, it's not our finest hours, but there we go. It is very trippy when you start the pump and you watch your PSI increase when you're in the water. Gas management is done based on your highest starting pressure after you've ran the pump and the rule of thirds. And they give you this crappy little wrist slate with all the thirds written out, but if you can do basic math in your head, you don't need it. And I lost mine on the first day. Why did you go all in on the Avalo system? Trying something new, see how it does. What are your first impressions? <laughs> <laughs> so what do I think? In short, I love it. I would dive a velo for every single cylinder dive from now on. Going back to traditional single cylinder diving is going to suck now. It just solves so many problems. Neutral buoyancy, never been so easy. You're at 100 feet, you swim up slowly to your safety stop at 20 feet, you've touched nothing, you've made no adjustments, and you're neutrally buoyant the whole way up. Wild, absolutely wild. There are no uncontrolled ascents. Any buoyancy changes that occur happen incredibly slowly, unlike the expanding gas in a BCD's bladder. The unit is so light, lifting the unit, standing up with the unit on, changing the jetpack to the second cylinder between dives is a breeze. Ever had a cylinder slip out of the cylinder band? I know I have. Avello has solved this with a simple strap. So it's just fixing so many of the annoying little things with traditional scuba diving. I think it's clear by now that I'm a big fan of the Avello product. It works, I love diving it. Here's the but. But there are still many unanswered questions particularly surrounding pricing and availability. You cannot buy a Velo right now. I cannot buy a Velo right now. If you want to get trained on a Velo, you have to go to Maui to the Velo headquarters for your training. And if you want to go to Maui and do the training and you do the training, you get certified, you still can't buy it. And nowhere has a Velo yet. This event in Key Largo was a one-off and I was very lucky to get an invite. I asked Aviad and Jay multiple times during the week, how much do units cost? What's the retail? I'm certified now, can I buy one? Can I buy two? Can I buy the unit I've been diving? And I could not get a straight answer. No price, no purchase, no sale. They are talking about lease agreements with dive centers. Leasing. Hmm. So they're a young technology company with an app production product that is revolutionary, a verified game changer for our industry, and they do not have pricing information and they do not seem very keen on making sales. That leads me to suspect that they are probably looking to sell the company, brand, patents, and concepts to a major manufacturer, Scuba Pro or the like. Exit strategy, people. That's just my guess. I could be wrong, but if I'm right, it means it could be a while before this technology is available to you, the diving public. Dear viewers, as I get more information, so will you. So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button to stay up to date. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you in next week's video. Dive safe, dive often. Oh, and by the way, also, uh, happy birthday to me. I'm not diving today, so cheers.